Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. I had a bad week in football, week 12 of the NFL. It was my first losing week in a while, but make no mistake, it was a losing week. Right, that cowboy field goal at the end of the giant game. Peyton Manning's late touchdown that pushed that game in overtime and knocked over the over-under. I had the under in that play. Made my week terrible. There's no other way to look at it. Sometimes you're going to lose games, literally with a few seconds or a few minutes left in the fourth quarter. That's the way... The system is built by design, right? So filter my comments through the fact that I'm coming off of a losing week. I'll be here in good times. I'll be here in bad times like this where the egg <clears throat> is all over my face. But there's a bet out there that does demand your attention because quite frankly, in my opinion, it's a casino mispricing this morning. And this is November the 25th. 2013. Now, people here online know that for a long time I've been touting teams like Carolina and Kansas City <clears throat> on the futures market uh, in terms of betting them to win it all. Why? Because you were getting outsized odds on both teams. Even today, Kansas City right now is 25 to 1 to win it all even though they have an identical record as the Denver Broncos, who are just a plus 275, 2.75 to 1 to win it all. For me in the AFC today, the casino mispricing is on the New England Patriots. Understand, they just got over a monumental hurdle. They just beat the Denver Broncos at home. Right? The coast looks clear to me. Certain things happened in the AFC yesterday that greatly helped the Patriot case. The Indianapolis Colts lost. The Patriots now are the two seed in the AFC. Right? Consider, too, that their schedule compared to the other teams is much easier. Let's go through that Patriots schedule. Understand that the Patriots going forward play the below 500 Houston Texans in Houston in their next game. Then they play the below 500 Cleveland Browns at home. After that, they play the below 500 Miami Dolphins, right? After that, they play the currently below 500 Baltimore Ravens. Right Then, of course, they close out the season against the below 500 Buffalo Bills. If they win out, there is nothing any team in the AFC can do to prevent New England from being at least the two seed. Think about that. Right? What the two seed means on a futures play is you don't even have to worry about your team getting knocked out the first week of the playoffs because they're not playing. Then, of course, the second week, they'd be playing at home. Right? The best possible team they could face if they played at home the second week of the playoffs would probably be who? The Denver Broncos, if Denver doesn't win. The AFC West, maybe the Indianapolis Colts. I like their chances against both teams. They just beat the Denver Broncos, right? Food for thought. For this, you're getting more than twice the odds that you would get if you took the Broncos to win the AFC. <clears throat> more importantly, too, let's take a look at the Bronco schedule. That's a difficult schedule. Understand that the Broncos have to play 
Kansas City going forward, right? If the Broncos lose that game, understand the Broncos would be in second place in their own division, right? The wild card, let's say KC wins out. If the Broncos get the wild card, understand they don't get a bye week in the playoffs. For them to get to KC or New England, they would literally have to win the first road game and then that game, the second game, would be their second consecutive road game. Understand too, they have other problematical games. They play the San Diego Chargers on the 12th of December. You know, the Chargers are the kind of team that can rise up and beat a team like KC, which is what they just did this last weekend, right? I think the Denver Bronco path to the playoffs is much more difficult than the Patriot path, but yet with the Patriots, you're getting better than twice the return you're getting on the Denver Broncos. Let's also talk about the structural problems that the Broncos have. It's very important, I would say it's critical, that you go over yesterday's box score between the Broncos and the Patriots with a fine-tooth comb. Now here's what I need for you to figure out. The league has figured out the Denver Bronco offense. Understand this is the third consecutive game where the Broncos have scored below their season average on offense. I know they put up 31 points. People are going to say, hey, it's 31 points. Guess what? They were averaging much more than that. Let me also say, too, that Denver's offense is of crucial importance to that team because their defense is not that good. Now, let's look at the box score. Here's what I want you to think about. If I asked you who the MVP was on the Denver Broncos, many of you would say readily Peyton Manning, right? He's the centerpiece of the offense. That passing attack to people like Julius Thomas, Demarius Thomas, Wes Walker, Eric Decker, that's really the hallmark of the team. Would it surprise you to know that yesterday, the Denver Broncos only got 132 net passing yards. What New England did was they came in and literally shut down the Denver Bronco passing attack. Right? They even sacked Peyton Manning a couple of times. Peyton Manning on the day in a game that went into overtime only threw for 150 yards, right? Wes Walker shut down, right? He only had 31 receiving yards. Think about that, right? The point is simply you can shut down the Denver Bronco passing attack. We know that just by looking at yesterday's box score. That Denver defense isn't that good. We know that. Just by looking at official NFL stats on the defense and comparing it to, to other elite teams. Just compare and contrast Denver's defense to Seattle's defense. Just compare and contrast Denver's defense to Carolina's defense. Right? Denver's defense has problems. Also, let's look at the way Denver scored the 31 points that they scored yesterday. Are you really going to bank on a Von Miller 60-yard fumble return every week as part of your presentation? Keep in mind, too, where the Super Bowl is going to be played this year. It's not going to be played indoors. It's going to be played outdoors. Right? Outdoors. If there's any decrease in the efficiency of Denver's passing attack, you know what they're going to have to rely on? 
Their rushing attack, guys like Noshan Moreno, rookie, Monty Ball, right? All I'm saying is when you think it through and when you realize their defense is subpar, right? You should have questions if you're a Denver Bronco fan, right? The point is the Broncos at this point don't warrant, you know, the huge odds that they're getting vis-a-vis -vis the team that just beat them last night, the New England Patriots. Let's shift gears and let's think about the AFC, excuse me, the NFC for a second. Now, when you look at the odds, you realize the 7-1 to one that you're getting on the Patriots. It's really a gift from the casino because you're only getting 6.5 to 1 on the New Orleans Saints to win it all. Think about that, right? You're getting longer odds on the Patriots who play a bunch of below 500 teams than you're getting on the Saints. And let's look at the Saints schedule. You heard me mention the Carolina Panthers. The Saints play them twice going forward. You heard me mention the Seattle Seahawks. The Saints play them in Seattle, dare I say, the Saints have three games, the two against Carolina and the game against Seattle, that are much more difficult matchups for them than anything remaining on New England's schedule. But yet you're getting better odds taking the Patriots to win it all, then you are the Saints. By the way, the other Saint games aren't gimmies. Tampa's defense is looking awfully good. That's who plays the Saints the last week of the season. The St. Louis Rams, you saw what they did to the Indianapolis Colts. Of course, the Saints play them. It gets even worse. They play St. Louis in St. Louis. Anyone who's watched Jeff Fisher for a long time knows that that's a recipe for disaster, especially when it's a trap game. The Saints play St. Louis in St. Louis between the two games that they play against the Carolina Panthers. Right? Let's talk about Seattle. Now, I think Seattle is the toughest team in the NFC. I think they end up with the number one seed. But just understand, Seattle, going forward, plays the Saints. Then they play San Francisco in San Francisco. After playing the Giants in New York. And let's just figure out the travel. Right? Because when you're gambling, you can't just focus on the opponent. You have to focus on the situation. Right? So the Seahawks are in San Francisco one week. Then they travel to the East Coast to play the Giants the next week. Then they come back to Seattle to play the above 500 Arizona Cardinals. Wasn't this the team that just knocked off the Indianapolis Colts this last week? And of course, Seattle then closes against the St. Louis Rams. Keep in mind, Seattle, and they're a dominant team, but they're only plus 300 to win it all. You're getting better than twice the odds taking the Patriots at plus 700. So this week, you know, when you want to make weekly futures bets, right, based on developing situations. But this week, it's clear that the best futures bet on the board is the plus 700 you're getting on the New England Patriots. The team is clicking at the right time. Take a look at the box score. Take a look at Shane Vereen's numbers, right? Receiving. Understand, Shane Vereen was targeted more in the game than Rob Gronkowski. Think about it. When the Patriots started the season, both of those guys were injured. Gronkowski didn't play for several games. Now Gronkowski's in the lineup. Now, finally, Shane Vereen is in the lineup. 
Look how deep their rushing attack is. Stephen Ridley fumbled the football, ended up in the doghouse. This is a guy who had over a 1,000 rushing yards last year. So what happened? Brandon Bolden scores a touchdown. Shane Vereen is in the mix. You got LeGarrette Blunt there as well. In other words, you have depth. Don't look at the lack of a big-time wide receiver. Look at the fact that the Patriots have constructed a passing game. That in addition to, you know, uh, Kembrell running deep and stuff like that, has intermediate targets that are very hard to defend against. Don't lose sight of the fact that they put up 34 points yesterday against the Denver Broncos. So right now, at the end of Week 12, all I'm saying is as you position your bet portfolio, just understand that the casino is still paying you way too much to take the New England Patriots. I don't know about you, but when a casino is giving me 7-1 on a team with a quarterback who's been to five Super Bowls, and let me just say this, before people start saying, well, he lost two Super Bowls, Understand, when he left the field, the year they were undefeated, they had a lead in the Super Bowl. That was before David Tyree and Eli Manning made Super Bowl history, right? So what you're telling me is the team that hosted the AFC championship game last year, right? They hosted it. The team that currently if the season ended today, would be the two seed in the AFC. A team with a coach and a quarterback with big-time Super Bowl experience. You're telling me that you're going to give me 7-1 to one odds, more than double the odds I would get if I took the Broncos or the Seahawks. In fact, you're giving me longer odds than I would get if I took the Saints who have to play the Seahawks, then the Panthers twice. You're giving me 7-1 to one odds on the Patriots after week 12 of an NFL season? No need to put a boat on the package, but wrap it up. I'll take it. I believe that play should be part of your betting portfolio. As well, of course, as I've been saying here online, longer bets on... KC, and of course, Carolina. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. And of course, I hope you also put a bet on New Orleans way back when, early in the season, when I talked about that team as well. The chickens are coming home to roost. Right now, some old favorites are starting to assert themselves Big win for the Patriots over Denver yesterday. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and, of course, dwyervip.com. Thanks for stopping by.